Okay. Okay, good. So let me first remind you what we did in last lecture. So in last lecture, essentially two points. So the first, so the first is that when there's um, infinite number degrees freedom, the, there can be infinite amount of entanglement. So in such a situation, your Hilbert space may not be able to factorize. OK. Then our standard technique of finding reduced density operator, et cetera, then don't directly apply unless you introduce some regulators. OK, so the standard technique. Yeah, so, so here are the two examples we discussed. One is the quantum field theory in the continuum limit. Say, uh, this is example one plus one dimensional, say, uh, for example, QFT. And the latter are two sets of n spins. OK, so one I call the L system, and the one I call the right system. And each point corresponding to a spin half uh, 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 qubit. And then imagine each of pair, imagine we uh, 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 entangle the left and the right system uh, 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 so, uh, so that the, uh, uh, each pair of the spin is entangled in such a state. OK? And then the, then the full state of the system is just given by the tensor product uh, 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 of such a state for each pair of spins. OK? And then we take n to infinity limit. So this is an example which you have infinite amount of entanglement. And if you consider finite energy states, and again, you find the Hilbert space cannot be factorized. OK, you find the Hilbert space cannot be factorized. And then uh, advertised, then, then I talked about, say, volume algebras and this classification. OK, so, um, so they can be classified by the rank of their projection operators. So we have type 1. So essentially, they have integer ranks. OK? And then we have type 2. So for type 2, now uh, 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 the projectors, they're, they're all, they are, Essentially, they have infinite rank uh, in terms of the standard definition. But you, then you can give a, a renormalized trace. You can define a, a, some kind of renormalized trace. Then you can define a, a renormalized rank. And then you can have a rank to be a real number. Okay, so the re, uh, uh, you can define a trace. And then you can define a rank to be a real number. And then you have type 3. So in this case, the rank can no longer be defined. Okay, so if you, no matter what you do, you find infinity. Okay, uh, for for any of your typical projectors. And I also advertised. I also made the claim. Before I did this classification. Is that the uh, volume algebra, the classification of volume algebra. Actually, corresponding to the classifications of entanglement patterns. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, today I will try to justify this claim. Okay, I will try to justify this claim. And uh, also, um, before doing that, let me just mention, uh, so the references I gave yesterday, they were all uh, physics textbooks or physics references. So there's a very nice recent review of volume algebra by, by John Source. OK, so um, who, is our, uh, who is our postdoc at MIT. And he wrote a very nice review on some aspect of uh, uh, a mathematical aspect of uh, volume algebras 
for physicists. So it's a very, uh, it's a very nice review. I highly recommend it to you. Okay, so uh, you can find some mathematical uh, uh, proofs and statements there. Okay, and also I want to uh, uh, emphasize, say that the um, uh, in my lectures, I try to reduce the mathematical details to minimum. Okay. So sometimes, if possible, I will avoid using, say, mathematical terminologies. But sometimes I cannot avoid that. And also, but in doing so, sometimes I might sacrifice some mathematical rigor. OK, so keep that in mind. Um, so before I start, do you have any questions? Yes? So yeah, so the so the psi the, uh, 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 the psi capital is the state we uh, is the state uh, yeah it, it, essentially you can imagine this is the vacuum state of your system and we uh, uh, then then we work on this state yeah we study the physics yeah so so you don't have to define the norm of the state so, so the uh, uh, we only uh, 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 the, the only way to make sense of this state, uh, yeah, one way to make sense of this state is that you can just uh, uh, look at the expectation value, say, of your observables. So as far as they have a, 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 a good limit, when you take n go to infinity, and then this state have a, uh, uh, have a, yeah. So this state is normalized to be one for any finite n, okay? And then you take n go to infinity, and then the only thing we need to make sure it makes sense is that the uh, co a correlation function of your observables are well defined uh, in this state when you take angle to infinity limit. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, good. So now let me try to uh, 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 try to explain why somehow volumen algebras actually they uh, characterize entanglement. Okay. So so again, so we consider the. Uh, we consider a physical system with a Hilbert space H, and, uh, and then, then the full set of operators on this Hilbert space we call BH, okay, so bounded operators. And then we consider some sub-algebra of this BH. So you should view this sub-algebra A as the collection of observables which we can access, say, as physicists. Okay, sometimes we cannot access the full system, but we can access some part of the system, and this is the set of observables we can, uh, which we can access. Okay? And uh, so, so now let's look at the various situations. So let's Im now imagine this A is a, a type 1 factor. Suppose A is a type 1 factor. Okay, so then now you can show, okay, in the type one case, uh, 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 say if A is a type one factor, then you can show, so I will not uh, g uh, give you proof there, here, that they exist, then they exist a, hill, a subspace, say a sub Hilbert space, okay? of this H, so this H1, which is a subspace of H, that the A is actually corresponding to all the bounded operators on H1, okay? And in particular, this Hilbert space have the following factor, uh, factorized structure, H is equal to H1, tensor some other Hilbert space H2. And the commutant of A, and the commutant of A is equal to the B on the H2. OK, and B is on H2. So um, yeah, so, so I will not give a proof of the statement, but intuitively it's the following. So as I mentioned yesterday, that the volume algebras, you can think of them as spanned by projectors, okay, projection operators. And if you have a type one algebra, and then essentially you can just list 
your, uh, uh, yeah, I can just uh, list uh, your, uh, your projection operators as a basis, and then, and then essentially uh, by, uh, by looking at those collection of all, uh, projection operators, then you can argue they, uh, they correspond to, yeah, they, uh, they should fill a Hilbert space, okay? And then the committent, then it's natural that the committent of A, which everything commutes with A, should come from the tensor product uh, 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 of the H1, okay? Good. So, so now suppose the system, so now suppose the system is in the state psi, okay? And now we can now define, we can now define a density operator, row one associated with A by the following. with the following property, so, so the one is the element of A, okay? The row one is the element of A, it satisfies the following properties. It's the psi A equal to. Okay, and A is any element of A, okay? So, so uh, uh, given that A uh, corresponding to the uh, uh, the operator on the Hilbert space H1, so that gives you a lecture definition of a trace, okay? And uh, and then you can define a, a density operator, row one, which uh, um, uh, uh, which for any uh, element of A satisfies this condition. Okay. So so uh, you can easily convince yourself. So so we're not going to uh, uh, do the proof here. You can easily convince yourself that this row one is actually the same as the reduced density operator, if you trace this psi uh, uh, over this H2, okay. okay. So, so then, then this row one is just the standard uh, reduced density operator, which you can associate with this subsystem, okay. So, so for this case, and now we see a completely equivalent formulation to, to the previous one, okay, uh, 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 but, but we started uh, from the algebra, okay, uh, from the uh, uh, algebra. So, 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 so equivalent, so give equivalent results to the Standard approach. Okay. But I want to make some remarks here. I want to make some remarks here. So the so the first remark is a very simple mathematical uh, 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 just. Uh, uh, um, uh, clarification. So suppose we consider the projector in this uh, 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 in A. Okay. So projector in A, you can always write it as a projector in this H1. So I call it small p, and then tensored with uh, yeah, it, it expressed in terms of the full Hilbert space and in terms of identity operator on H2. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so, so obviously this is a projector, okay, and this belongs to A, okay, belongs to A. And then, so, so one, one remark is that when you calculate the rank of this P, you should just calculate the rank of this small P in H1, okay, you should forget about this identity piece, okay, because when we define the trace, we only define in terms of H1. Yeah, because in particular, H2 can have infinite rank. Uh, uh, H2 can be an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Okay, if you look at uh, 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 this projector from the full Hilbert space, it seems like it have an infinite rank. Uh, uh, if H2 have a, uh, is an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. But there's a trivial way to get a finite answer, you just forget about this factor, and then you get a, uh, just an integer. Okay, so, so this is the integer rank we normally say for the, for the type one, okay, uh, with this caveat, okay. 
But the second point is very important. So even I say this way give you the same reduced density operator as the standard approach. But conceptually, these two approach are very different. Okay, and the way uh, and the data we need to get this row one are very different. Okay, so conceptually, two approaches very different. So we can understand the difference by the data you need to use to actually compute this reduced density operator. So if we use the standard state approach, so what do you need? So you first need to, factor, you first need to factorize your Hilbert space. Okay? Uh, so first at least you have a tensor factorization with Hilbert space. And then you need to have the full wave function have to have the full wave function for all system and then you trace out the part which we cannot control okay then you trace out the part we cannot control okay and then you get this row one okay but as we uh, uh, as we said, often we only have access to some su subset of the degree field. We only have access to A. Okay, we actually don't actually have the information about the full wave function uh, 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 of your system. Okay, uh, but this first approach actually you need that. But the, the remarkable thing about the second approach using this algebra. In the algebraic approach, you only need local information which we can access. So the only thing we need is that the expectation value of your observables. Okay, you don't even need the state. Okay, we don't need to know the state. You just need to measure the expectation values. Okay, and then you can uh, then you need this trace, and then you can try to find the row one. Okay, you need only have access A and the row one, and then so you. From the local information, yeah. So, so local, uh, it's a uh, it's a coded. Just the, by local, just means the information we can access related to this algebra A. Okay, so local information is enough. Okay, to determine row one. Okay, so in the sense that if you know this algebraic structure, okay, if you know the algebra is type one. And that already tells you there must be a factorization. Okay, you don't need to know what even H2 is. But then by knowing the specific expectation values of A uh, uh, in some states, and then you can actually figure out the entanglement of that state. Okay, you don't need to know the global information of the wave function. Okay, so the conceptually, this algebraic approach is much more physical. Okay, uh, uh, it's more physical in the sense that the, uh, f uh, from the uh, perspective, if you are local observable. Okay. Any questions on this? Yes. Sorry. So, if you're, uh, what operator is little a? Are you considering because when you try to reconstruct row one such that you get the correct observables? Yeah. Like, uh, you're reconstructing the row one, uh, which is the subset of the trace, like the bigger trace one that uh, agrees at least on the observables that you measure. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. So. Uh, so here is the expectation value you measure in the state. And now suppose you can define a trace, uh, uh, you know, define a trace, and then you can try to find an operator, which is the element of A, so that for all possible uh, uh, element of A, that this equation is satisfied, and then, and then uh, 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 such a row one can, uh, can be uniquely determined. Yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah, I just uh, 
uh, uh, you can find the element of the algebra to do this. Yeah, uh, be because the, think about the uh, reduced density operator. Uh, a reduced density operator is part of your system. Yeah, so this is part of your algebra. Yeah, so it's very light, uh, uh, it's part of your uh, algebra, yeah. yeah. But also you can find it, uh, 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 that equation has a solution within the algebra itself. Other questions? Sorry? So, so in the second case, you, in principle, you don't need to uh, uh, start with the factorization of the Hilbert space. It, it just, as far as your algebra is type one, and then, and then you should be able to find the trace, and then, and then now you can just use this equation to, uh, uh, to find the uh, row one. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, just say you can define a trace. Yeah, uh, and all the, uh, all the rank is the integer. Yeah, yeah all, uh, 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 the rank of all the projection operators are integers, yeah. Is this specific to uh, purely on the whole system or is that not necessary? Yeah, not necessary. Yeah, yeah I'm just using the pure state as an example, yes. How do you show that the row one defines this trace unique? Um, yeah, it's just from the, essentially from the positivity of the trace. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So now let's see the other example, uh, 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 the other case. So now let's imagine that A is type one, but has a center. Okay, so remember, uh, uh, by having a center means that the uh, A, uh, the intersection with its commutant is no longer just proportional to the identity. Okay, uh, uh, you can have something a little bit more non-trivial. So in this case, again, just from linear algebra, I will uh, uh, not prove it, okay? And then they exist, then you can show, just based on information of A, then they exist a decomposition of a Hilbert space as follows. Over the form can be decomposed as the direct sum of the tensor product. Okay? And that any operator in A has the, its, blo uh, its block diagonal in alpha, okay, and, uh, and within each block, has the form say some operator O alpha in, 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 in the H1 tensored the identity in the H2 alpha, okay? Okay, and so O alpha is the BH1 alpha, okay? So, so here, uh, uh, when I say the uh, uh, A is equal to BH, you should always yeah, imagine it's tensored with the identity of the H2, okay? So here is a slight generalization of that. So when you have a non-trivial center, and then, then, then still you have a factorization structure, but now you have a, a sum of the factorization structure, okay? So, so the Hilbert space can no longer be simply factorized, but you can uh, uh, write it as a, 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 a direct sum of the factorized Hilbert space. And, uh, and then within each block, then it's as if you are in the case of a factor. Okay, so within each block, yeah, it's a factor. Uh, yeah. It's alpha then, uh, like, like a basis for the center? Yeah, uh, uh, alpha is just some, uh, uh, some labels, say from one, two, et cetera. Yeah. Right, but like, is, is like the cardinality of alpha gonna be like the dimension of the center? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Alpha is just a label, and, uh, and each of them have their own dimension. So H1 alpha, yeah, say if alpha equal to 1, so this is H11 is a Hilbert space with some dimension, and this H21 is some uh, Hilbert space with some dimension. Right. Oh, uh, is that based on the dimension of the center of A or? Yeah, that depends on specific examples. Yeah, so so the center, uh, so the center of A just corresponding to, say, the identity here times the identity here. But now you can multiply arbitrary constant depend on alpha. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so not just the identity, but now you can just uh, uh, now for uh, for each block you can have a separate uh, a C number. So that gives you the center. Okay, so, so in this case, even though it does not have the simple factorization structure, we can still define, so you can still, in this case, because of this structure, so there still exists some kind of trace, okay, because as we said, the, uh, for the type one algebra, you can always define a trace, and then you can again use this, suppose you are in some state, psi, and then you can again use the same equation, Okay, so, so now I just uh, sum over and row 1a, okay? So now you can find the row 1. So for any psi, again you can find a reduced density operator. You can find the row 1, okay, which is element of a. And of course, the a, uh, 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 this row one, since the element of a always uh, also have the block diagonal structure, also have the block diagonal structure, and then now you can use this, and now you can just use this to find the, uh, this row one, okay? You can find uh, a row one. And now it's row one, and now this is our definition, okay, of the reduced density operator for this case, for this case which is no longer a factor. So this generalizes your standard story, okay, even though it's still very simple, it generalizes this standard story, okay. So, so this gives you a somewhat, uh, in the case of a non-trivial center, so give you a somewhat trivial generalization uh, of the case which you cannot directly factorize. So, so this story, actually, uh, uh, I will not have time to discuss this explicitly. Uh, so this story, say, applies, example, for, for example, if you put uh, uh, a gauge theory on the lattice, and due to the Gauss law constraint, uh, those gauge constraint, et cetera, and then, and then you don't have the simple factorization like this, okay? But then you can actually reduce the system so that you have actually, uh, 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 you have that kind of structure. Okay, you have that kind of structure. And, uh, but, but, it, but if you think from the algebraic point of view, okay, and then, then, uh, then you can uh, encode the entanglement structure, again, just by looking at whatever the sub-algebra you are interested in, and then, then you can f figure out the entanglement of the discrete degrees of freedom uh, described by this, uh, uh, control this kind of, uh, uh, control that sub-algebra and with the rest of the degrees of freedom. Yes? Given a Hilbert space, I, I can have either like type uh, a, a type 1 factor yeah. or a type 1 factor with no trivial center. Like, can I have the, the A subset, uh, both subsets in a given Hilbert space or? or yeah, in principle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it just depends on your, uh, uh, your question. Okay. It's yeah. more like what are the things I want to understand, maybe I'm interested in this set of operators, then I will use this, or I will use that. That's right, yeah, depend on the set of questions you are interested in. Okay. So the set of questions you are interested in determined this algebra of A uh, of interest to you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Other questions? So is this the composition of this true for type one? Yeah, so, so, so if you say, if you have a type one uh, with center, then you can prove that such a decomposition exists. But, but I don't have to go through this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so if I purely think of algebraic way, I don't even have to think about this. Uh, I, uh, 
the only thing I did is I only need to have a definition of a trace. Okay, so it's so um, the more generalized trace, and then and then and then I can define row one, etc. Yeah, I don't even have to worry about whether a uh, Hilbert space factorizes. Yeah, but in uh, but in essence, that, uh, it does factorize in this case. Okay, so now let's consider the next example. Is this the entanglement spin example? Okay. So now let's consider the example two for the entanglement spin. So, so now let's consider the, suppose we, we only can access the left system. Okay, suppose we can only access the left system. So as we said, in order to have finite energy state, we can only flip finite number of spins, okay? So, so the operator, so we, so we are interested in operator algebras For the left system, okay. So uh, uh, let me call it AL. For the left system, okay. And then typical operator in AL will have the following form. So A would be a tensor product of the operator acting on each pair, okay? Uh, 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 act on each spin. So so A one. A2, et cetera, okay? But as we said, we, for finite energy constraint, we can only flip finite number of spins. So then a lot of the operation is that all but finite all but finite number of AI Okay, uh, just identity, okay. Identity acting on this two-dimensional space, just two-dimensional identity, okay. So, so that means you can only have finite number of non-trivial operations, okay. And then your Hilbert space is generated, okay, so, so now you can, you can, then the Hilbert space in this case You can show by acting the collection of such operators, okay, uh, uh, under some completion, uh, 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 um, by acting the AL on H on the state. Um, do I use psi? Yeah, um, psi and generate. Hilbert space, okay. H. So this is the Hilbert space of the states we are interested in. Okay, so the, it's the, uh, so you can imagine this psi is a ground state and then, or, or some kind of finite temperature state and, uh, and then you just uh, uh, excite uh, around these states, okay? Okay, so now let me just first, it turns out the, the nature of the algebra and the structure of entanglement actually depend on this theta. Okay, uh, 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 depend on this theta in the, uh, uh, in the sensitive way. Okay, so it turns out for theta equal to pi over four, corresponding to you have maximally entangled case. Okay, so this is a maximally entangled. So this maximally entangled state is like a sum of your double states between the left and the right at the infinite temperature, okay, and uh, at the infinite temperature. So, uh, um, so this is maximally entangled case. That you find, you can show that AL is actually type one, type two one, okay? But for general theta, so if I worry theta from zero, uh, uh, when theta is equal to zero, the, uh, uh, they're just not entangled, okay? Uh, so we don't consider that case, it's boring. And so now, uh, and the theta equal to pi over four is maximally entangled. So for generic theta between zero and pi over four, 
Okay? So then you find that this is given by AL, is given by this type 3 lambda algebra. So this type 3 lambda algebra is a, a lambda is a number from 0 to 1. And the lambda is related to the theta by lambda equal to tangent theta. Okay? Lambda equal to tangent theta. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can show uh, you can show that the Hilbert space is complete. Yeah. So so there's a mathematical theorem which guarantees that. Yeah. So this is called the uh, uh, a Gaia found uh, 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 and uh, a Siegel construction. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a mathematical uh, procedure guarantees that uh, this is complete. Good. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, 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 that's a very good question. It turns out, just by acting AL on this Hilbert space, you can actually generate the full Hilbert space. And then, and then, the, then the action of A right will automatically correspond to the committent of AL. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. If you move theta slowly or smoothly up to pi equal to 4, yeah. how, do you, what, how does the transition happen from you know, having projectors at zero and infinity right, right, to right. zero to one or, you know, finite. Yeah, yeah, so it depends. It, it, it depends on the this seat. So uh, uh, certainly physically to do this uh, uh, require infinite amount of energy in the angle to infinity limit because you, ch you are changing the entanglement for infinite number of spins. Okay, so, so, uh, so, so hypothetically, if you can do that uh, in some situation, indeed, and then uh, uh, then when you change the theta, the ratio of the algebra just just involves, yeah. Okay, so so we didn't say much about this three lambda before, and uh, uh, I will make some. Uh, 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 I just mentioned that exists this three lambda, but uh, uh, but I will uh, talk a little bit slightly more about it uh, uh, in a little bit. Okay, so now let me just give you a little bit of intuition why this is type a uh, type two one. Okay, so this is type two one. Yeah, to show this is type three lambda is uh, <coughs> is actually non-trivial. Okay, so uh, but I will give you a, a, a rough argument why this is type three. Okay. So so to see that this theta pi over four is type two one. So so you need to uh, see first. I need to. I can just do it by uh, introducing a trace, okay? So I will define a trace, uh, 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 define a trace, and then I will show that the projection operators under that trace is finite, okay? And so first, if you look at what are the projection operators in this system, okay? So the projection operator in this system, say a, a, a subset of AL, again, it's corresponding to you just take some projection operators in each subspace, okay, and you just take tensor product of them. Okay, so the typical projection operator, so now let me say a little bit to see pi over 4 is to 1. Okay, so, so first let's just say your typical project have the following form. So the simplest project, you just take identity for, for, for all of them. Okay, so two by two. So all identity are right here will be two by two. Okay. Okay. So naively, this kind of, uh, uh, and you can also have, say, projector like this. So let me write as a P plus. So P plus would be, P, P upper would be just the projection to the upper spin, okay? So this is the, uh, for the first pair, you projection to the upper spin for the, for the first spin, okay? And, the, and then the, uh, for all, all the other pair, you just take the identity, okay? And similarly, okay, so any typical vectors, you just take finite of them, okay? Finite of these ones, flip them into one of those two-dimensional uh, projectors, 
Okay, so that's the projection operator uh, uh, of AL. So, so if you look at them, in the angle to infinity limit, any of them have infinite rank. Okay, because if you use the standard uh, trace, be, be, because uh, uh, each trace of them give you a factor of two, and then, the, then they're all infinite, okay? They're all infinite, uh, uh, if you use the standard trace. But now I can define a trace which is finite. Okay, I can define a trace, it's finite. So the way to do this, I will do it in, in two steps, okay? Uh, actually, I will do it in, in, yeah, maybe two or three steps. So, so, so I will just make some statement and then you will uh, give you an exercise to verify yourself, okay? So now let's just look at, so since this is just corresponding to the tensor product, so it's enough, let's just look at the first pair. Okay, let's just look at the first pair. Suppose let's look at the first pair, and then you just have this state pi over four, or phi pi over four, and then let's imagine, yeah, let's look at this expectation value. Okay, so, so A1 is just some element uh, acting on the first pair of the spin. Okay, so the same thing for, uh, for any pair. So, so you can, so it's a simple exercise for you to do, okay? So this is actually just given by one half. The trace in this two, dim two dimensional, uh, uh, two by two dimensional matrix, okay? A1 is a two, two dimensional matrix, and they're just given by the trace of A1, okay? Okay, so this is a simple exercise for you to do. And you can also show, because of this, now it's immediately clear if you multiply two such thing, and that's equal to PA. Because this just gives you a trace. Okay, sorry. So that just gives you a trace, and of course under this trace, uh, they can be exchanged. Okay? So now, uh, so this is the st uh, first step you can show yourself, okay? It's, uh, it's take two minutes. Uh, uh, actually, if you are even uh, uh, familiar with this kind of two-dimensional stuff, it actually take you two seconds. So now, now, now let's look at in this state, in that precise state. So now this precise state, now if you look at A of this form, okay, let's look at A of this form. And then essentially that just give you the product. So for what, yeah, uh, 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 let me just write it down, the answer, okay. Uh, just give you one over two to the power K, then trace AI1 trace AIK. So suppose there are only K of them, which is non-trivial, okay? So, so the only five of them can be uh, different from identity. And uh, so, so suppose the, uh, 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 there are K of them is non-trivial, and then I just given by this. And this trace is just, again, this two by two trace, okay? So this is very easy to understand. It's all tensor product. Each of them is just one half. And so, so for K of them, it's just this, okay? And the, uh, the rest, when you have identity here, when you have identity here, the identity, when you take this trace, uh, 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 when you take this expectation value, and then one half, and trace one equal to one, okay? So they don't do anything. Uh, so uh, this is the answer you get, okay? And then you can now easily show, because of this and because of that, then under this psi, any AB, in the algebra is equal to psi BA. Okay? And you can also check yourself that because of this definition, okay. yeah, so now we can just define this as a trace. Now we can define a renormalized trace as the expectation value under this psi. So now for any A as an element of capital A, then the trace, we define a small trace A, is just given by expectation value under this sign. Okay. 
and they satisfy this property. And you can show this is positive because it, it, essentially when you sandwich between the psi and psi, yeah, yeah it's, so you can show that this satisfy all the properties we require for a trace. Okay. So now you can also check yourself all these projectors, okay, they have a finite value under this trace, okay? So for example, trace P0 just equal to one because everything there is identity uh, and identity when you do, uh, do that single trace there, it just give you one. And then the trace of P1 give you one half, et cetera, okay? So depend on how many non-trivial projectors you have there, you just the, the, uh, 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 say you have non-trivial k projector over there, and then you just get one over two k. Okay, so so this number can be as can be as small as possible, but the maximal rank is one. Okay, so so all the projectors uh, uh, have a finite uh, rank under this normalized trace. Okay, so here there's a catch. So the catch is that this trace is only defined up to your overall constant because I can define it by, uh, by some arbitrary lambda. It won't change anything, okay? Be because the, if I define the lambda, uh, uh, yeah, this property is still satisfied, okay? So, so this trace is only defined. So, uh, uh, but I can normalize this trace by require this maximal projection operator to have uh, 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 rank one, okay? Rank one. Okay, good. So now again, so, so now I will not write the, uh, uh, so now for any, so now we can use this trick again. Now for any state, chi in your Hilbert space, okay, uh, obtained by that way, okay. Now you can define a, a density operator associate this that again by uh, by using this formula now we can use this trace rho okay rho chi okay and uh, and this rho chi again you can find it the rho chi is uh, uh, you can find such a rho chi uh, uh, which is part of the algebra of it okay okay so so now we can define up to your overall constant, we can define this rho lambda, okay? Uh, and this overall constant is state independent, okay? Uh, it's state independent. Uh, uh, up to such an overall independent, uh, uh, state independent constant, uh, 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 now this uh, rho lambda is our reduced density operator for this sub-algebra, okay? Uh, sub-algebra. Even though here I don't have factorization of the Hilbert space, et cetera, but I can still uh, define a reduced density operator. And now you can calculate the entropy and all other entropies or other uh, quantum information quantities you can, uh, uh, you can extract from a reduced density operator. Okay, it, uh, important. In particular, for the Psi itself, under this normalization, okay, under this normalization, because the trace is defined by the Psi itself, then what is the density operator corresponding to psi? Yeah, just identity. So, so that's is expected because we said the psi is maximally entangled state. Okay, so any other state, any excited state here will be less entangled than uh, than uh, uh, rho psi. Okay, so the so rho psi under this normalization, so the state you started with. So this will have zero entropy, okay? Because this is identity, and any other state, any other chi, because they are less entangled than this maximally entangled state, and then uh, uh, then you can show that they actually using here. So if it defined to be trace rho log rho, okay, they have. Uh, uh, a negative entropy. Okay. So the negative entropy here is okay because here they have an infinite amount of entanglement and we just normalize the entropy with respect to this maximized state. Okay.
Good. Any questions on this? Yes? In principle, Sorry, sorry, which vacuum states yeah, you are talking about? So you yeah. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, 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 the psi, the psi is our coated vacuum here. Uh, by vacuum state here, you mean unentangled state? Yeah. What if, yeah, if you have an entangled state that uh, is considering uh, unentangled state? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so in unentangled state, you uh, you don't need to do this. So in, uh, in unentangled state, and then you just reduce to the type one algebra. So you can just flip the, uh, 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 these two uh, a Hilbert space factorize and, uh, and just reduce to the type one algebra. Yeah, just the standard situation. Yeah, yeah just flip finite number of spins. Uh, yeah. Good. So, um, so now let me make a remark why this is type three. So to show this type three lambda is uh, more difficult, so I will not do. So to get the feeling that this is type three, then you can show that this property, which is the basis for everything uh, follow, this does not. This only happens for theta equal to pi over four. For theta not all, uh, uh, pi over four, then this is not equal, okay? And then we don't, we cannot define a trace. Okay, so this way, if you cannot define a trace, and then you can show actually there's no way to define a trace. Okay, so, so you can show in that case it's a type three. Okay. And so, uh, so somehow this pi over four is very special, somehow give you this trace. Okay. Give you this trace. And so, so even though naively you look at, okay, so, so suppose we use standard method, we regularize it using some finite n, and then you can calculate the entropy, then you do some subtraction. And that way you may be able to get some finite answer, but you will not be able to see this difference between, say, theta equal to pi over four and uh, uh, other values of theta, okay, uh, uh, which are somehow intrinsic to the, uh, to the infinite n limit, okay, uh, uh, intrinsic to the thermodynamic limit. Okay, so, so for other theta, no trace exists. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah, in principle, you can also increase it, yeah. Yeah, but now we don't have a way, without the trace, we don't know a way to quantify that. Yeah, by, in by introducing a regularization, you can quantify it, but then we don't know whether that gives you a universal answer, yeah. Okay, so now let me pause to make a lot of remark. So let's just summarize the lessons we have learned so far by looking at this set of examples. So the remark this is not a very ideal. So the types of algebras 
OK? They give you general, they give the structure general entanglement structure for all states in your Hilbert space, OK? So they, they decide, actually give you the general patterns, OK? Uh, they, they tell you that uh, uh, this system have the entanglement pattern for all states. No matter what states you choose, they all follow the same pattern. And when you choose a specific state, then of course you have much more specific information about the entanglement of uh, uh, that state. But there's a universal aspect for all states in your Hilbert space is encoded in this algebraic structure. OK. So, um, yeah, so each, uh, uh, the, on top of this, then each state has further more specific entanglement structure. So that is encoded in this row one, uh, in whatever information you can uh, uh, extract it from row one, et cetera. OK? Good. So, so now we have learned a remarkable formula. You said this formula helps us to find the reduced density operator in many different cases for type 1, type 2, OK? Just from the local data, OK? From the local data. Once you are equipped with the trace, and then uh, from the local data, you can get the entanglement information. This fails for type 3. OK, this fails for type 3. And so, so for, for type 3, what do we do? OK, so for type 1 and type 2, you can work with this row. Then for type 3, what do we do? OK, so now let's talk about what to do with type 3. OK, so it turns out now you have to do something very different. OK, so, 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 so originally, of course, the volume array, when they classified those algebras, they, 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 they didn't have this entanglement in mind. But they stopped at type 3, OK? Be because now, everything we talk about so far, they just fail for type 3, OK? Uh, and the, yeah, Volnuma himself thought maybe type 3 is too exotic for physics, OK? But then the progress come later, OK? So, so they first classified maybe in the 1940s. Progress came from mass community in the 1960s, OK? And then uh, early 1970s. So 20 years after that, uh, there's a huge progress. So to motivate the, uh, how to do the type 3, so let's go back to the simple case, to the type 1, OK? So let's consider, uh, come back to, uh, uh, to a simple case. Let, uh, uh, let's just imagine we have a type 1. We have a, H uh, a tensor factorization of uh, 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 HR uh, times HL. Okay. So now let's suppose that psi is highly entangled. Such that when you look at the row 1, Rho L obtained by, by, by trace out uh, HR, and the Rho R you obtained by trace out Rho L, uh, uh, HL, they both are invertible. OK? OK, the, uh, the both are invertible. So just give you a sense that actually uh, uh, them being invertible actually corresponding to uh, the highly entangled, because being invertible, at least they have to be full rank. OK, for your operator to be full rank, and then, uh, 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 then they are uh, very uh, uh, highly entangled. And, uh, and for example, one simple example of the full rank is that they're just given by the identity operator. OK, identity operator, of course, can be inverted. And that's a maximally entangled case. OK. But if the L, but suppose the L is given by, the R is given by a pure state, say, uh, and if the uh, HR have more than one dimension. And then, of course, this is not invertible. 
uh, uh, of course, we know in this case, uh, you don't have any entanglement. Okay, okay so, so if you have a finite dimensional Hilbert space, then that actually, uh, uh, this happens when the, uh, uh, not only do you need them to be highly entangled, also you need the dimension of uh, HR to be the same as dimension of HL, okay? But if they are both finite dimensional, and then, 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 yeah. Okay. Good. So now, since they're invertible, then, then we can sensibly, sensibly define the following quantity. Then we can define quantity called delta. It's given by rho r and rho l minus 1. Okay. Sometimes we denote it as x k minus k. Okay. I, oh, oh, oh. Also, it makes sense to take the logarithm. Uh, uh, yeah. So now it turns out that this data have the following property. Okay. So 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 now let's look at the operator algebra. So let's look at uh, so in this case when you factorize then the AR would be the bounded operator for HR. So this is just the standard type one case, and the AL is the AR commutant, and is the bounded operator for HL. Okay. And now you can show, tri tri trivially see, so this is the Hermitian operator, because rho r and rho l, they, uh, they trivially compute, okay? So, so by writing rho r and rho l, I mean an operator in, in the right Hilbert space always tensored with identity on the left, okay, a uh, uh, similar thing, okay? So now it turns out this operator have the following property, so this is a Hermitian operator. You can gen uh, then you can exponentiate it, okay? So uh, so yeah yeah. Let me just use exponential ikt. Okay. So if you consider this object, act uh, uh, the uh, uh, the unitary transformation generated by this uh, logarithm of delta on any element of AR. You can easily convince yourself you take it to be AR. Okay, so this is trivially C. What's the K? You, uh, uh, this is just involving some powers of rho R and rho L. And but rho L commute with everything in AR. And then, then you just have a rho R acting on this, and the rho R is the element of AR, and then of course everything is in AR. Okay? And similarly, if you do this for AL, You get just the AL, okay? Get the AL. So you also show. Maybe I should use a different eraser. So so now. All right, actually, before I start talking about this type three, uh, I forgot to pause for questions. Do you have any questions uh, uh, regarding what we did earlier? Yes? Sir, what happens in the first example? Uh, suppose I have a Yeah, the first example we're going to talk about later, because that's type 3. I see. Yeah. Yes? Sorry? Yeah. Trace. Yeah. So, so you can show that they, 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 they are unique. Uh, 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 they are unique up to a, a multiplicative factor. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a unique. Yeah. 
Other questions? But if there are two two systems that are both type two one, they will have the same trace. Um, it, it, it depends. It, it depends on space. Uh, 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 the mathematics only tell you the existence of a trace, okay. and the specific. So how is that? Some system dependent. Um, so each system. So you might ask the following question. You say, could there exist a, a regularization scheme, but somehow some optimal some optimal regularization scheme, then that give you it's possible. Okay. Yeah, it's possible. But but the benefits uh, uh, of this is more than to calculate the entropy for you. Yeah, yeah is that this give you an intrinsic way to describe many other properties. Yeah, because entanglement not only affects your entropy, but also affects many other aspects of physics. So the question of the globality aspect of this is that it, it's global for all of the it's not global across. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you show that the tra uh, trace uh, diverges for type 2 infinity? Hmm? For type 2 infinity? Yeah, yeah. So for type 2 infinity, uh, it's just you can have. Uh, 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 just the trace is unbounded. So in this case, we see the trace is always bounded by what? Because this is a maximal projector. And uh, so, so for the type 2 infinity, and then you can have, yeah, just you can have the projection operator there, uh, 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 their trace is infinite. Okay, so. Uh, So there also exists. So you can also, uh, in, in, in this case, okay. So so, so in particular, uh, you can show, okay. Uh, so again, I will not uh, uh, prove this. Uh, th this is a simple exercise you can show for the finite-dimensional Hilbert space case, okay. That there also exists an anti-Uri tree operator J. Satisfy j square equal to one. Okay, so it's anti unitary. Satisfy j square equal to one, and it takes when you act on a r, take you to a l. Okay. And uh, so, 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 uh, so this is an exercise for yourself. Okay, to construct such an operator uh, uh, in the in the finite dimensional Hilbert case case. So in the final Hilbert uh, 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 case, it's, uh, it's very simple because the dimension have to be the same. And then you can just map them, uh, or you can find some way to map them. Okay. Anyway, so, so this delta is normally we call modular operator. And the J, we call it modular, in, uh, a modular conjugation. So this structure is somewhat trivial okay, in the type 1 case. Because we don't have to think about them, okay? We don't have to think about them, okay? And uh, um, but it turns out, okay, that this structure is trivial for the yeah. You can always do this for the for the type one, type two, because in that case you can uh, construct the reduced density operator, and then you can just do this. But there's not much need to do this because, because you already have row R and row L, et cetera. So, uh, so this structure is essentially trivial in that case. But it turns out, for the type 3, even though you cannot define a row R and or row L, you cannot talk about those things. But you can still find the delta and the J, which satisfy those properties. It turns out the those properties are survive to type 3. Okay, so, so let me call this equation one. Equation two and equation three. So it turns out one, two, three actually can be generalized to type three. Okay. And that is the thing which characterizes your entanglement structure. Okay, that's the thing which uh, characterizes entanglement structure. So, so, so before mention uh, its generalization type three, just let me mention uh, also a side remark. 
Yeah, it's not a side remark, it's an important remark. So for, from the perspective of observers who can only see AR and AL, okay, such kind of flow, okay, uh, so this generates a unitary transformation. Uh, 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 you can imagine this is some kind of time evolution, okay. So under this kind of time, if you're an observer, you can only access AR or AL, what you see is actually a thermal system. Okay, I see if you are in the thermal system. It's because your, uh, uh, your density operator, rho R, say let's write it as exponential KR, and rho L as exponential minus KL. And this K, which generates flow, essentially just KR minus KL. Okay, so, so for the, for, from the perspective of the AR, essentially just generated by KR. And then your density operator have this form. So essentially you are at the finite temperature with beta equal to one. Okay, so, so from this kind of flow, from the perspective of AR and AL, you as if you are at the finite temperature. And this finite temperature is a consequence of entanglement. Okay, it's because we don't, it's because HR and HL uh, uh, inside are highly entangled. When you trace out one of them, and then you get this density open structure, and, uh, and so, so this is a consequence of entanglement. And what we will see is that in the type three case, even though you can no longer talk about KR, you can no longer talk about rho R, rho L, et cetera, this structure remains, and this finite temperature structure remains, okay? Uh, and that is in code uh, that the system is highly entangled, okay, uh, it's highly entangled. So, so there's some deep connection between entanglement and the temperature, okay? Good, so, so now let me try to translate this language into type three, uh, into language can be applied to type three, okay? So right now, uh, we have to use, say, rho R, so here, uh, uh, I use rho and rho L, say they're invertible, okay? Yes? They don't take any density matrix and write as the exponential of minus something. Yeah. And say that looks thermal. Yeah. But it's only thermal in the sense of that the thing that plays the role of the Hamiltonian you think of as a yeah, 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 yeah. So in this case, you may say this is like trivial. Okay, so in this case, it may be trivial. But when you go to type three case, then become non-trivial. Because in that case, rho r and rho l don't exist. You just see the temperature come from nowhere. Okay, okay good. And while I'm speaking, I've got two minutes left. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, since we only have two minutes left. Um, good, good, okay. So maybe it's better we just yeah, I think this is a good point to stop. And so you have any questions on this? And so next time, we will talk about how to generalize this language so that we can describe it without using rho r and rho l. Okay, just become an intrinsic language. And then, and then this is related to the, say, the unroot temperature, uh, uh, which I mentioned yesterday, and the Hawking temperature, et cetera. And, uh, um, and then how that applies to quantum field theory. Yeah, anyway, so, uh, so let's stop here. Yeah. You said that I just show I can construct a trace, which is right. Right. Is there any other way to prove, to see a system whether it's type two or type three without the implicit constructed trace? Yeah, there's some other ways. Yeah, there's some other ways. Um, so, so, but those more fancy ways. Um, yeah. Uh, so there. So, uh, but for the for this. Um, yeah, for example, you can look at the um, spectrum of the, uh, this uh, modular flow operator. Uh -huh. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That can also give you information. Waterfall means that the pay off is more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, there are also some other environment you can construct. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you construct the modular flow operator, that requires yeah. you to first construct the type one algebra from which you are building the sub-algebra that you think of yeah. as like yeah, for yeah, left yeah. and right. Yeah, for that discussion. Okay, so then, okay. So because you have that algebra, so with the modular flow, I guess usually before construction of like the modular operator, you have some anti-unitary operator. Yeah. That you can just write down. Just or uh, you can, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the key when you generalize this yeah. uh, is that then you, you, you first have to generalize the condition that the row R and the row L is, are invertible without using row R and row L, okay? And, uh, and then you can show with that condition, then there will always exist delta and the J. Okay. That's those like properties. A assumption. Yeah, okay. uh, 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 once you have that condition, okay. then there's a theorem yeah. uh, showing that uh, uh, delta and J exist. They don't tell you how to construct them, but you, that thing exists. Yeah. And the, uh, just the existence is already very powerful. You can use it for many things. Uh, and that is the entanglement structure. Yeah. What was the motivation for introducing this modular operator in delta? Hmm? What was the motivation for introducing modular operator? Yeah, yeah, so the basic idea is that if you go beyond the type 2, go to type 3, we just had nothing, okay? We just had nothing. We don't know how to describe it. And it turns out that this is the only handle you can I mean, find. It's natural to introduce, uh, is it like coming from some others? Uh, yeah, it's a, it, it, no, it came from, it came from, um, so, so people didn't know this until there was a paper by, uh, by, by a mathematician called Tomita. Uh, he wrote a paper, and, but then his paper nobody understood. And then only a lot of person called Takisaki, and he understood it and developed it. So now this is called the Tomita Takisaki theory. Uh, it, it's essentially the, uh, showing that the existence of such a delta and the J. And, and this delta can be uh, introduced in type two or type one? No, the, no, you can introduce in type two and type one, but in right. that case, it's more like trivial. Uh, you don't need to introduce, uh, it does not do much more for you. So the non-trivial thing is that for type three, that's the only structure remaining. And this KR and KL, uh, they uh, commute in there, right? Yeah, yeah, they commute. Yeah, but, the, the, but in the type 3 case, there's no KR and KL. You only have a delta. Ah, so the, the delta in type 3 will not be represented like a uh, yeah. No, 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 no. no. So, so it will be some abstract. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You just can abstract so what it. You, what you described is just for type 2, right? Yeah, here just motivates you. I see, I see, okay. Such a structure. Mm -hmm. And such a structure is not that deep from the point of view if you have type 1 and type 2. But it turns out for type 3, that's the only thing remaining. Uh, and that's the handle which you can do for type 3. Yeah. And, and, also, and also here for this uh, example which you, which you wrote for chi, yeah. so do we need to guess it, like if, if I'm giving you some state chi, so yeah. we need just to guess it by, like, by trial, trial? Or how, how do we find this role chi? Right, yeah. So it, it's... Just, uh, it's a, it's a, in principle, this is a linear equation you can, you can solve. Ah, so yeah, okay. yeah, it's a linear equation you can solve. Yeah, you, uh, you expand the rho chi in the basis and, and then solve a linear equation. So I had a question yeah. about kind of interpreting uh, like the n goes to infinity limit here. Is, yeah. Is the intuition for why um, when I'm considering only like the finite number of spin flip states is generating a complete Hilbert space? Is it basically that in the n goes to infinity limit, I'm generating super selection sectors generated by infinite spin flips? Yeah, yeah. And so then, like, and then I don't get the Hilbert space decomposition because I, I do have the tensor product on like the full That's sum true. of super selection sectors, but the super selection sectors themselves don't respect the decomposition. That's right. Okay. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but not, uh, but essentially you have infinite number of super selection yeah, you, sectors. Yeah, you have this infinite. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then for each super synaction sector, you have a separable Hilbert space. Right. And all of them together is a non separable Hilbert space. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, which uh, just physically, we, we always just work with one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, thank you. Yeah. Mm. So you mentioned uh, that for a gauge uh, theory absorbable, like there is a huge entanglement, right? Uh, so how to see this or how to. 
what can be said. Yeah. So so uh, uh, yeah. So the state yeah the rough statement is the following: in the gauge theory case, you may say, oh, I don't have a factorization of the Hilbert space, and it's because I have Gauss law, and then uh, because of the Gauss law, I don't I cannot really localize degrees freedom on the lattice point, and uh, 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 so that gives you a factorization non-factorization of the Hilbert space, but. But, but in the lattice gauge theory, then you can see this non-factorization in the reasonably clear way is that that kind of non-factorization is different from the non-factorization coming from infinite amount of entanglement. Uh, it, it's the non-factorization coming from you have a long trivial center. Yeah, so, so it's a different type of non-factorization. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, you have to work with uh, specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. Uh, uh, yeah, you have to go through some details of the, uh, how to treat the gauge theory on the lattice, etc. Yeah, uh, 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 that take a whole whole discussion. Sorry. What is the usefulness of these properties one to three, which you mentioned there in this? You mean the type one type? Oh no! Oh, that one. Yeah. So do they like constrain? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. So if for type three, they will somehow constrain our space. Yeah, yeah. So that tells you there's some kind of hidden structure there, and now you can use that hidden structure to do lots of things. And so, for example, we will argue. That gives you some kind of emergent time uh, for gravity. 